Good evening, everyone. This is David Herman, alias Does the Artist in the New Year. So I thought I'd make my first video of the year on January 2nd, 2020. 1, 2, 2, 0, 2, 0, at 10.49, just about 10.50. And uh, it's the current piece I'm working on. So let me give you the overview. So I'll put the view fit on zoom to uh, fit right there and this is a painting um, that you can see on my art station and on my uh, youtube channel um, it's all about the brain and different phases of the brain and different uh, changes of people and cultures and theologies and magic and you know just kinds of cool stuff gears uh, in the southwest petroglyphs represent the sun the gear shape Pardon me. and so I use that as a part of the brain because it represents the um, like the wheels of the mind turning and then there's an illumination, the self-awareness, the lighting up of the mind. Also, this painting where you can see I have the third eye, a triangle over the brain that below has the fish evolution and the reptilian brain and, and uh, a machine that's making sparks, igniting self-awareness and consciousness and all those things. And... Uh, a seeker wanderer in a fur with some dreads and a smiley kind of a face here and then these like a, a ghost of his mind looking kind of like a paraceum with lips behind the head and then something like a devil coming out this side and the gears and then the elongated neck kind of a balloon figure this female that's looking kind of like a pussy cat or a, a wild animal hen female uh, representing um, also, this, the attraction between male and female and how we perceive things as sexy and alluring as well as intellectual. And then the, the small head above with the triangle, the square and the circle, sacred geometry elements and things uh, like a golden rectangle shape. And then above, kind of a head like it, anchor what? So I'm going to work on this head and you can see me draw. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, enlarge the picture and this is on the uh, Wacom Cintiq 24 inch just so you can see the resolution. This is a 2K monitor. You can go way up till you get to pixels. And uh, the overall size of this actual drawing is 36 by 36 inches at 300 dpi. Now when I post uh, images uh, on my Facebook page and uh, YouTube page or ArtStation, I always change the resolution, whatever resolution they're accepting to get it on there, until I make a print. The print will be at this fine resolution, these vibrant colors. This is, uh, you know, the monitors are color calibrated when you get them. So. Okay, let's do some work. So what I did first is I did these lines as vector lines making the face. And then I have applied um, my own little pressure mask to it. Uh, and each one has a sharp edge on each end, gets wider in the center. Pardon me, it is late. And then... Uh, you know, I've started to put some tones in. So what I'm going to do is kind of tone this up. In the end, I'm going to apply cracks to it so it looks like a head from Angkor Wat, the most beautiful temples of Cambodia, and from our ancient peoples of the earth that uh, had such amazing technology and engineering precision and knowledge of the stars and so on. So let's go into uh, what is called uh, pixel persona mode and brings up this menu and I'm going to do some airbrush uh, electronically here so I'm going to put down a darker pigment you should be able to see that now coming down on the side of the face and this is where I start to create my illusions 
So from being a flat vector drawing, I now add shading like I was airbrushing uh, traditionally on a canvas or, you know, mostly when I did airbrush, I did it on a, a cold press board that weigh, it was a hundred pound uh, cold press board. So like a big white sheet of cardboard. But back in the day when I learned, uh, you were able to peel those off and then wrap that board around a scanner and that's how they got scanned into magazines and stuff. It's not like today where you can draw it right in your computer. There's no scanning involved. The only uh, time this becomes reality is if it's output, you know. And so, so much of my art just exists, exists now in cyberspace. Um, so this year, I'm going to be concentrating solely on art and solely on tattooing and my writing. Uh, I've decided <laughs> that my silly rants about political things uh, are pointless. So there won't be any of that this year. And the only reason I did that is uh, I like to evoke conversation. I like people to think about what's happening. Uh, you know, an artist uh, takes in their environment and that's called input, and then they kind of regurgitate that or spit it back out in their artwork and focus on something that uh, they want to get across, whether it's a political topic or a, um, intellectual or cerebral or nothing or just visual. It's abstractions. It's But, you know, my conversations, just so it doesn't get boring when you were watching, tended to get to be political. And while I didn't really, I'm not adamant about anything, I wanted to evoke people to think and engage with other people, not necessarily me. But then when you get off one of my videos, you'd say, oh, you know, the guy was doing this drawing and he was talking about this topic and blah, 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 so that human beings engage with each other. I think it's way more important as people that we can communicate with each other. You know, art is a visual way of communicating, and dance is another visual, sensual way and, and cerebral of communicating, and, um, you know, writing and using your imagination when you read a book, and all these different ways that we use our mind is part of the theme of this, illust this illustration. And so I'm just applying uh, at different size nozzles of my airbrush here, different streams of a darker color, to start building up a sculpture. This uh, this head that represents it could it doesn't have to be anchor watt, but uh, in my case, when I get done with this, I'm going to put in the cracks uh, of the head that shows the aging, because aging is very important too, you know. Um, we learn from our elders, we get our wisdom from our elders, uh, we stand on the shoulders of giants that came before us, they say. The more we study the mysteries, the more mind-boggling it is. Oh my gosh. And so now I try and translate all that into my art. I try and incorporate philosophical ideas, forces of nature, the five forces in life, sacred geometry, there's an entire language in this, and uh, my mental cerebral uh, way of processing my world, because we each, you know, are a little bit different, uh, I try and turn into something visual that has a connecting style. You know, style... We all develop a style. The more we draw, it's very important just to just draw. I'm not trying to imitate anybody. I'm an inventor. So I invent my my ways. Um, you know, it takes a long time. And, uh, of course, I'm always available if anyone wants to send an email. Nobody does. But you can con contact me off of ArtStation. David Isaac Herman on ArtStation. Be glad to uh, connect with you. Why I do what I do. 
In fact, if you're in the area of Olympia, Washington, it would be great to meet another artist that uh, has their work on ArtStation. That would be kind of cool. I don't know if there are any. There's no way to like filter that. But if you're watching and if you live in the area, I'd love to connect artistically, friendly. So you're watching me just kind of go with the flow, feeling what I feel, creating optic, optical illusions, and uh, not just optical illusions, but also um, 3D. Now for me, creating 3D, uh, you know, it may not be the way everyone else does 3D, but I use line, I use color, I use form, the basic stuff, and I do it my own way so that there's a lot of optical illusions, because Optical illusions are very important to me. The reason they're important to me is because there are truly as many ways to see and perceive and interact with our world as there are entities and creatures. In other words, if you're an ant, your reality is valid and you interpret the world one way, uh, if you're a hornet, you're going to see it another way. If you're a flower, you're interpreting it another way. And if you're a, a bird, you know, uh, whatever you are in the animal, vegetable, mineral kingdom, you have a unique perception not only for the type of thing you are, whether you're from mineral or rock, a plant, etc., but also as that particular type of thing, you also are, are different individual. So like, you know, for as many humans there are on the earth, there's as many personalities, there's as many disorders, there's as many good things, bad things, whatever. They're all good in that we're all one, and everyone should be helping each other, I believe. So I'm not trying to be political. I'm trying to talk about the mind uh, as I do something about the mind. And you know, the more I meet, I've had fascinating jobs, uh, not always in my life. I mean, even in the last two years I've had to work as a dishwasher for six months, and whatever it takes to make ends meet. Uh, but each time I do something like that, you know, it's with the hope that I'm going to have an interesting experience. And I try and make it that way also. You know, I try and, I try and make it unique. I try and bring something to the experience for my for me to share with others and to receive from others. So, uh, I am social, even though artists spend a great deal of time by themselves. Uh, when I tattoo, I speak to many customers. When I was in uh, commercial art advertising and the printing business, I spoke with clients. Of course, it's not the same as uh, like a personal social relationship, but you know, where you get uh, maybe intimately to get to know a person you've known for 30 years in your life or something, a few people that you get to know that way. Um, but I am, you know, I'm outgoing. I, I don't do anything really. My, my presence on the internet is not, uh, at this point, making any money. <laughs> and I do wish it did that. I do wish people bought my paintings to support me. <laughs> so that would be great because then I could really just spend much, much more time doing this. Um, I love art. I will say this, the year 2020 is going to be a year where I get more involved out of my house. I spend enough time in here. I want to be able to travel a little more. You know, humbly in my car, sleep in my car, and, and get to some conventions, and uh, travel a little bit out of the United States, 
and meet people to further develop my skills and network and share stuff. I've been uh, You know, it's time. It's time for me to broaden my horizons more and meet the younger, newer people in this, these businesses of art and understand more. And everybody I meet has just been very kind, very helpful. Um, yeah, art's great. The life of an artist is difficult, and that's why it makes it even more interesting, I feel. I would love never to have to worry about uh, financial things again. That would be so wonderful. And uh, on the other hand, there's some the type of neurosis that people develop, like myself, <laughs> having to think about earning a buck all the time and uh, still wanting to pursue their passions. This is where my love is, art. And I hope by the time I pass to have acquired an audience and people that would collect my eccentric stuff and get to know me a little bit as an artist. There's no books written about me or anything like that. I've actually revealed myself candidly on YouTube and people can watch the last, I don't know, I've been in Washington like 14 years and probably on YouTube the majority of that time but in the beginning it was a lot of outdoor stuff just kayaking and hiking and riding my my bike out in the woods and filming that showing waterfalls showing fish showing different things um, and over time I don't know I just got political which is a bad thing you know for me it's just time for me to stop because I think, you know, it just, after a while, you start to to get passionate about things that really, they're just temporary. You know, that's the truth. Life, life is uh, very precious. Many people I know have uh, passed away in the last few years, and very good friends, and, um, you know, I've always pursued my thing of nature and art. But now I'm reflecting more on that, and uh, life is seeming more precious to me now. So going into uh, even more precious than it always has been. I mean, I, I love all the people I love in my life, but the, the temporal nature of it and the suffering of my friends and stuff that they've gone through. Uh, it's making me value the year 2020 is going to be what I hope a momentous year. And I, I, I want it to be um, very challenging in my creativity. I want to produce something that other people uh, hope to collect, you know, but I'm not trying to sell out. In other words, I don't want to just make what people buy. I want to make art and let my audience develop. And I've done that my whole life. I've sold fine art paintings. I've tattooed. I sold stained glass when I was younger, did commissions. Um, everything in art. And you know what? Now in the digital age, when I look at this, this medium, which I was very reluctant to get into because I'm self-taught uh, last six and a half years, uh, this medium, I can incorporate everything I have ever learned in art into a picture. So take, for instance, stained glass. Stained glass is either you wrap a piece of glass that you've cut to a shape with lead, you know, and you melt solder and join the pieces, or you um, wrap them in copper, like a copper tape around the edges and fold it so it goes up against the side and folds over top and bottom and that's lightweight, less weight than the lead and you solder those pieces together, right? 
Well, having worked in stained glass, and you're probably saying, why is he talking about stained glass when he's doing digital artwork? Well, these lines, these lines can be seen a lot like lead lines. Right? Like I laid down the lead and I'm doing a stained glass painting, or I'm mixing airbrush with stained glass, or I'm taking, um, I have a lot of symbolic philosophy that goes into this, but, you know, I mix, if you look very carefully, a lot of optical illusions. My favorite optical illusions are combining negative and positive space as though it can be seen either way depending on how you focus your eyeball. It's very tricky. And, uh, you know, I also work at real time. So none of my videos are edited. I don't know how to put music in. I don't know how to edit them. I don't know any of that. I just start the camera and I work and I try to concentrate so I don't say anything offensive. Which, being a crazy artist, sometimes I do. And so it's never meant to uh, cause a uh, you know, conflict. It's meant to um, strike a chord of awareness. That's all. Like two of us are sitting and having a coffee in the coffee bar or shooting a game of pool and you have a dialogue. All the time, I hope people just remember it's a conversation and that once that conversation stops, that conversation doesn't exist anymore. And I may even forget the side I took in that conversation. But what it does do is allows two people to communicate and work the muscles in their mind. That's all. You know, it's like you exercise your bicep. There's a million ways to do it in the gym. You can use free weights. You can use uh, plates on a pulley system. You can use a uh, kettlebell. You know, you can do push-ups. You can do resist against the ground. You could pull a towel and do isometrics. There's many ways to exercise that muscle. And, even, and everyone will have a different opinion on how to get the best result. But at least you're exercising the muscle. It's not staying sedentary. This is what I try and evoke with the mind when I'm drawing and having dialogue. Uh, you know, I could be cute and just talk about cute things and stuff like that. But um, It's always good to have some kind of adult conversation. You know, this whole thing about is a video for a kid, is it not for a kid? Um, my generation, which is older, um, I think we're smart because adults, uh, they did talk to us about stuff. You know, they did include us, um, not to provoke us or overstimulate us or any of that stuff. It was, it was with thought to just bring us into the use of the mind. It really was. Uh, this is how you make your muscles work in your brain, so to speak. So now let's, let's, we've got quite a bit of color going on in here. And all this can be manipulated and changed and brought together into a unique painting. Um, it's another thing for me to sit still. You know, an artist, I've always been very hyper, even though I did advertising, even though I do uh, digital, even though I'm a tattoo artist. And of course, when I'm working, I'm very focused and I can sit for, you know, tattoos I've done up to 11 hours of uh, tattooing on an individual person with a couple of breaks in there. It's a long time to sit, focus, and use your muscles of your hand and your brain and your eye hand coordination. Digitally, I'm good for like, you know, two, three hours with a few breaks, and then I need a break. Uh, it's because um, there's some original stuff going on, and 
I also need time to like stand back and look and say, okay, how am I going to do, um, if I wanted a gem that was turned into a third eye, or if I wanted to represent the mind. So now, I'm going to show you something cool you can do with this. As you're, let me save this. Very crucial to save document. <laughs> Okay. Also, if I keep it on a single layer, you know, like uh, I'm, I don't even know where I am because I didn't pick a layer. That's pretty bad. So let's see where we are. We're somewhere in here. I, I messed that up, didn't I? Yes. Down here. Oh, my God. I didn't mean to do that. So I might even be under the black. Isn't that interesting? Hmm. I wonder. That's pretty cool. It's under the... Uh, hmm. Well, we'll just continue to work the way this thing came out like that. I'm, I'm intrigued now what's going on. So my I did not select the layer. I was anxious to get going. And it when I started around the cog, what it did is it jumped above the cog. Interesting. Which tells me it's... It's under these, um, it's nice. It's, I normally I have to erase. That's what I was getting at. Um, over the, if I draw over the lines, but I didn't even realize it. it's not showing on top of the lines because I'm a layer underneath it, but it is hiding the gear. So let me take an eraser for a second and just see where we are. Let's, yeah, see, so we can erase around it like that. But we are uh, just where I've thrown down this recent pigment. I am over the gear, but the gear had another layer of color over it. See, but see, I can erase back the gear. Now here I'm creating a like a white line by erasing, which uh, makes that surface look higher like right there, like it's a highlight, right? So then I can have that, that's like lit up, and then I can make it come down thin, I can uh, make it thin to thick over here, get a little brighter, come up here, and do like that. I can erase away the pigment over the kind of a grayish purple that I have originally on that first gear. And I can find this layer with the gear. That's not a problem. So we're doing that. You can see, though, that it's actually, it's not you have to erase anything over the vector line. It's actually under the vector line. So let's see what happens when we come up here. I'm just, just very lightly hitting the edges. So it looks like this layer is almost like an open skin with the gear inside, you know, it's like curved up like you've cut, hollowed out, let's say, a piece of squash, you cut it, or a pumpkin, and cut it into a gear shape, and it maintained the, the roundness of the pumpkin and everything, but there's an opening in the top, like where you lift the top off when you carve a pumpkin, the shape of a gear. And that's what I mean about the way I think. Uh, creating layers represents to me the multiverse so that's I won't get into the whole philosophy of how I think and how I represent all these things but over the years going from canvas and MDF board that I used to paint on to digital I finally reached the uh, comfortable point where I'm able to accurately do what I want to do digitally, know how to use the tools to achieve something in the layer I'm working, right? So now the gear goes behind this brow area. Let's keep that line coming through. Let's erase like that. And then I'm going to look at that. Do I want that gear to to be, I'm going to erase right off the gear. 
and that creates another layer see because that gear which I will put color into and mess around with optically too this painting is going to take a while because I'm just so loving it into it very happy with the way it's coming out and everything but now you see what I did just by erasing I highlighted just the very slight edge of this like the light is coming from perhaps right above that olive looking third eye nugget that I just created it's not going to erase uh, so we have some pigment over the green we're able to get to right there take that off interesting like it and I will continue to erase that gear because I want that gear to be clean of color this new color anyways so I'm going to put some black shading in there and show you how I can mess with the optics of that wow very cool all right so let's uh, let me just go around this one more time showing you the power of erase as well as color you know you can draw with the color and erase with the erase and yeah I think of it as like a needed eraser you know so if I was I'm a mixed media artist when I draw uh, or paint and uh, that means I use oils and I use Conti crayon and I use chalk and I airbrush and I might use um, uh, you know pencil pen lipstick whatever I feel like doing to achieve a certain effect not just the whole painting's oils or the whole painting's chalk or something like that. You know. Just want to put some color in there. Uh, just and so now, having been a mixed media artist, I think of that as I paint digitally. So maybe that to create this look, I could do this with pastels. You know chalk dry conti crayons i could do it with airbrush like i'm doing here but i think about the tool i would use in the real world when i'm digitally doing it and the reason i say i think about that here we're going to put some pigment in these gears now uh, give them a 3d effect <coughs> excuse me is um, so if I'm thinking of chalk when I do this, for instance, then I, I use the pressure of my hand and stuff to uh, very sensitively put the chalk down at darker or lighter or, you know, mix it. And so see how we've got that happening there, like this, we went to this color. And then, say I want that edge of the kind of fuchsia orange gear in the middle there to have some kind of a highlight. I could use a color just to mess with the mind, you know, just to create a layer, you know, to create lift. Like here, you know, does this... So you're thinking of seeing things through layers of glass the same way we draw on layers. And it adds a dimension. It's hard sometimes to say, is it on the same plane? Is it elevated from the plane below and so on? I can be very discreet about that and make it clearly obvious so you don't have to use imagination. Or I can make it vague and confusing so that the mind uh, plays tricks on itself. And then that makes the art look interesting because every time you look at the art, you see something different. So, like, let's get into blacks for a minute. See, if you go around the color wheel and you pick a color on your triangle or your square, if you want to see a square, you just double click the. Uh, dot there. Every black is different because it's mixed with colors. It's called a rich black. It's not just plain black. It has uh, a pigment in it. So if I want my tone of black to be have red and blue in it, I'm going to this side of the purple, very dark. 
and then I close that. And if I put that into that gear edge, say in the corner, then that spot is actually optically darker than another spot. And depending on whether it's going over something like this, see, creates another look. And so there's underneath, so you have a cutout, right, that makes an edge. Then you have a gear in there. And now your mind is saying, oh, is that gear like dropped down a layer? Uh, in the front here, is it on the same plane? But in the back, is it on a lower layer? If I go right to dark black, so let's say I want this plane here to be very dark and crisp up at the top there. Then I want to come down and maybe do that on this edge. And these outer edges of the gear, just where it meets the other color, I'm dropping in a dark edge. And it's not the same all the way around, but it can be. If I take the opacity up, now it's darker. See, on that edge, that the lead edge, and that where it's tucked in. So you can create uh, illusion that way. Now these lighter edges give you lift. And, you know, it's interesting, like it passes under here, the eyebrow space or the, um, you know, the frontal arch above the eye socket. So you kind of go like that all the way around with that black. See that contrast is making that gear look like it's moving um, through some type of strata of layers. Many different things. You can do a very thin line. So by varying the thickness, it kind of kind of makes you think which way it's spinning. Um, if it's in spin, you know. You kind of just play with stuff. And if you go too far like I did there, that's when you get your eraser out and just kind of take it back. And if you take off too much pigment, like here, uh, you didn't want that, then you can put color back in. I'm going to take some off and just see what we get on this top layer. Because this is like a, like a pinking shear, you know, kind of cut through here. And, you know, I haven't had any texture like grain or anything, but I've starting to make a feeling of rock and layers. Now we're going to work on that gear in the middle of the head. Uh, I'm going to have this kind of radial. So um, I could do it with a gimmick, you know, a blend or something like that. I'm not going to do that right now. I like airbrushing. If you do it with a blend, it is possible. So let's say I go over to, um, this is one way to do it. Let's see what happens here. Go over here and you select the fill tool. And we're going to select uh, a, a color. We're going to hit the normal thing and we're going to, not the normal, we're going to uh, type, we're going to go elliptical, Oop. edit undo. I want to be on a layer. <laughs> Sheesh. So we're going to go all the way to the top for this. Because that layer is underneath, see, it just squish. Man, I, I got to remember that. All right, so pixel and at the very top, but then I add a layer. Now, I'm going to add the radial, the elliptical blend. Let's see if we can do this. Elliptical. Nope. Uh, let me think what's going on here. Just 
sometimes I get confused. So that's a, oh, it's a fill says white. Okay. And it went across the whole canvas. So we don't want that. We just want to be in a certain area. And uh, let's see. So uh, elliptical, we get elliptical. I still haven't hit elliptical. Normal. Nope. Uh, edit undo. I'm going to play with that later. Because <laughs> that's what it is. It's inside a stroke, and I, I haven't created the stroke. So, okay. Not a problem. Let me go back to what I'm doing here. I get two loss. So, I'm going to have this. I'm going to airbrush it in. Uh, like a blend here mm. in the center of this gear so I'm going to kind of come around like this I'm at the top now so I want to be above these layers so I can erase and we'll see if that works so we're going to kind of come around here and I can always undo I'm going to take the eraser and I should be able to erase that center without losing the art in the middle, see? So that's a little trick with layers. Like that. And then if I want to go bigger, you know, I went to, so I'm going to orange now. So I'm going to be in the brush. And put some orange and curve it like this. So this is a creating not only a layer effect, but it's also creating mass and uh, a solid nature to the top part of the head where the gear um, resides in this particular case up here. It's trying to create a blend of stuff. And then follow your color wheel, then it will go to fuchsia, then it will go to purple, and so on. That's always helpful if you want to do it blended like a color wheel. Um, so you don't really have to put much, too much thought into that. You know, it's got the basic rainbow. And that's what's happening there. And then, um, take my teal. I love teal. So I might go and just put some Hot spots of teal on the side and bring it into the center like that. A couple places. Now, here you can see where when I draw, see I'm going over the line. Let me edit those out. I'm going to go softer. I'm going to edit them all out. I'll show you why. I'm going to reduce the opacity. I want that to be lighter. And so I visually looked at it. I didn't like it. And I have the ability to undo that. Whereas if I had it traditionally airbrushed that on there, you can't get it off. So you have to let it dry. you got to figure out how to paint over it. You may have to sand it a little bit. But we change the opacity on this layer. 48. And now... I'm going to do that again, so I, now that I have like kind of an idea where I'm coming out from here, but I'm going to come to the center of the gear and just vary the weight by my hand, pressing lighter or darker, and I'm going to create an optical illusion with this color, I'll show you. So I'm bringing it out from the very seed here, the Atman, the seed of the brain, where our soul and spirit is, according to uh, the Hindu writings. And uh, Patanjali Sutras, which speak of that, which I read as a young man, and I've read many times since. <laughs> I doubt if I'll ever become uh, the enlightened being of that, but it's certainly a good read for spiritual stuff. And then I'm putting a dark color here, see? And now it looks like a shadow coming up uh, on an angle, and then going over the top ridge here. I'll widen it. And then 
darken it away from that line. So now that line looks like it kind of bends and that this is an inner bevel. I mean, it sort of does, doesn't it? Right. Okay. Then if I put a highlight on that blue, file save. At the very top, you can suggest that kink or bend. And if you want to create an optical illusion with that line, which is what we're going to do, so now I'm going to kind of the very highlight there and pressing hard, see, and then I left it blend down. Now it looks like it's beveling down. And I'll, I'll do a little bit the other way like that, just a fuzz, okay. Then I'll throw in a darker teal. And I'll start inside and kind of go up. Let me get some of that pigment right there. See, and then it looks like it's moving down into the center. And then at the far edge, I'll do down and come up. All right? So now I have what kind of creates that bevel gear, like the center is lower than the, than the high point is the, the perimeter of that yellow. And if I want to really uh, freak you out or something like that, I can create a black shadow, just where it's totally like blocking white. Oh, my monitor blocked up. And just kind of go like that. And then I can do that at the very edge of this bevel here towards the center, like that. And then it looks like even the gear is raised if I leave a little space of color next to between the shadow and the uh, blue this is some optical illusion stuff giving a 3d we went from a 2d look to a 3d look right tightening it up cleaning that line making it nice and tight and putting more pigment on the side to clean that up it's when you edit this stuff that it gets tricky as heck. So, uh, because I just paint over anything, it doesn't really bother me half the time. I'm not afraid to paint. And now I'm going to take and run just a little white edge along that shadow. And then that shadow becomes a a slice like uh, you know it's cut into the gear right and then I can uh, soften that over here and so there's a lot of stuff happening I just soften that edge a little and uh, go back to black clean that that edge and they can always magnify these things, you know, I, I should really, because I work too tiny sometimes. But there, you can see what I've created. There's a little bit of black that's bugging me. So I can take my eraser, hopefully. Let's see if it's erasable. Did we go over the, uh... Yes. So if I go to, uh... Opacity, a little more opacity to it. There we go. Clean that edge up all the way around because I'm on top. And same thing down here, I can clean this up with the eraser. See, this is why layers are important. And it's the start of uh, some kind of bizarre optical illusion, of course. <laughs> and I mean bizarre, because I don't know where I'm going with it always, but I have fun. I have fun. It doesn't have to. It doesn't have to be like symmetrical to me if I'm not doing symmetrical stuff. You know. Yes, it's a gear. Yes, the gear was a shape that's symmetrical, kind of. But now. There's things happening in here. I can put little spikes of energy. I can change this any way I want. 
like that, see? So it's, it's a lot of art. Art is fun to me as well as technically challenging and thought-provoking and things like that. Um, yeah, yeah. I hope if anybody watches this, what they really get out of it is, is, the, is technique and to talk about art with their friends. Because why not? I like to put a little bit of the blood in here now. This is like the, the mind's fluid. You know, somewhere you'll see red in the lines and stuff like that. Where I'm adding like a, a, a fluid or something. I'm filling this up now with a little color. The blue wasn't working for me because I have blue there already. And I'm trying to create some optics of confusion. Like this, not like to make you crazy, but to show the layers, the, 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 the cosmic nature of this, which is unpredictable. You know, in reality, each person meditating, meditates and sees something different. Anyone I studied with uh, when I was younger and studied yoga or martial art or something like that, you know, if I was being really praise, praising the master teaching it and all that, um, what I found common among all those masters um, is they would say, you know, I'm a master of myself, and I can lead you to, I can show you the techniques that got me there, but they may not get you there. It isn't that it's universal with the same result, but it's a technique that gets you along the road to getting there, and how fast or how slow or how quick you reach your enlightenment may have a lot to do with your past lives <laughs> or what you did in this life or whatever you believe, you know. Again, I'm not trying to be philosophical too much, but I'm trying to keep it from being boring you know, in the fact that I'm just doing techniques. Now, some people just like to watch technique. I don't know. It works. I feel that a sped up video where, you know, um, it, it, it of course sucked me in originally that way, watching somebody draw and going, man, how the heck are they doing all that stuff? But I prefer to, as an artist, to find ones where the guy actually talks about what he's creating, or the girl, and, and the man or woman, and they show me. Uh, because when I first got into digital, I didn't know what the buttons do and what, you know, how to get the result. So, having known, knowing how to paint was one thing, but not being able to find the button, the right button. <laughs> it isn't a button that says paint with it, paint digitally like you paint regularly. You have to say, okay, I want to do a technique. And that technique, I want to look like I drew it with chalk then you have to figure out uh, how to select a brush, make a brush, or find a brush, that when you lay down the digital color, it leaves a chalk appearance, like a little bit of texture, or it's gritty, or you put down a pigment and you come back with a spotty brush and do something. So knowing the actual tools, unfortunately, took me a long time, and it's still something I, you know, discover on a daily basis, nearly daily, I would say. So here we're working these tiny rays of light. We're going to look at this at actual size in a second, which is pretty big, because this is 36 by 36 inches when it's output. All right, so we can go to View and zoom and actual size and it's even bigger <laughs> than what I'm working at oh, and really you should be working at actual size but the problem I have with actual size all the time is I forget 
the overall view. So, you know, I have to pan back a lot. Uh, sometimes I like to be smaller, so I'm looking at the whole painting at once. And then I have like the overall effect. But you've watched a build up. Let me save this. Let me put an edge before I save. Uh, right in here on this blue line. I don't know if you can hear the soft sound of my digital pen dragging across the matte surface of the Intuos, or not the Intuos, the um, Wacom Cintiq Pro 24 inch. They have a matte surface to the glass that's exquisite. You don't need a protector. Uh, your brushes, you know, your tips wear out a little bit faster because it has a texture, but um, there's just nothing that compares with this. I like this better than I do working on a canvas. The feeling is just, just right. <laughs> it's probably different for every person, but for me, it's just, you know, I've gotten used to it. I think, I think that's what happens, you know. At first, everything seems so extraordinarily different than what you've done in the past with your habits and your way of creating, and you have to learn a new, new medium. <coughs> Coat's getting a little dry. It's just about time to cut this video. I'll go up to 60 minutes on it. And to me, it's a construction, too. I, I Sometimes I think I'm carving. Sometimes I think I'm painting. Sometimes I think I'm sanding. Uh, I say to myself, what would I do? How would I get this white off of here? You know, I would take a sandpaper or an emery cloth or something and do it. And how do I fool the eye and so on? Okay, so let me save this. File, save. We're going to pan back, look at the whole picture. <clears throat> Pardon me. And you see how all this stuff I can micro down uh, all the edges and stuff, and I will. So view because I'm just a detail kind of a freak. Zoom to fit. So there we go. Now that's looking pretty cool. I like the effect. I try and bring in the sun. I try and bring in the southwest feeling. The Aztecs, the Mayans, the Incas, the Olmecs, the Ol the Toltecs, the people that built Angkor Wat. Um, all over the world, these primitive cultures. And by the word primitive, I just mean they came before us, the past cultures. Let me clarify that. They communicated among themselves. They had trade routes. They did all kinds of cool things. Well, that's looking really cool now. And it will take on more of a happier context just by manipulating color, just by doing what I do. But uh, it's got a little bit of a feel of jade. It's got a little bit of a feel of gold. It's got a little bit of a feel of, you know, bird feathers and painting. And it's very warm. And I, it, it's cool. It's working for me. I'm going to make sure I save this. If I Once you save it, it lets you, you only see save as come up. Because maybe it's thinking you want to make a different name or save a duplicate copy. or It's kind of a cool way to check yourself. Okay. So... I'm going to make an export digital file about a quarter of the size to post the face. So first thing I do is I go file and then I go export. And then right now I'm at 10,800 pixels by the same. So I'm going to change that to 5,000. Actually, I'm going to change it to uh, 2500 and then I just tap next to it and now it's square at that and I'll say export and it's going to ask me what do I want to call that and I'm going to call it uh, oh, just first coloring of stone face And then I'm going to save that in this file folder. Okay. And then I'm going to go into uh, Photoshop and crop that area and post it. But uh, thanks for tuning in. One hour is up.
I've done my best to entertain and draw, and hope you have a good night. And so we stop it.